A question I've had for a year now after I got hit by de-indexing is how many blog posts can you safely post every single day? Now, about a year and a half ago, Rowan from Craft uh, used my methods to create a few websites. And they've basically just been sitting, chilling for the last year and a bit. Now, this is what it looks like at the moment. You can see about 200 impressions a day, a few clicks, some interesting keywords, but nothing special. So what we decided to do was to test the auto blogger out and the results so far may surprise you. Now I'm going to show you all of the updates to the auto blogger towards the end of the video, as well as showing you how to auto upload to WordPress, et cetera, et cetera. I've added everything now, automated formatting, automated uploading, automated featured images, everything. But for now, I just want to focus on the actual results. Now, obviously it's only been three days or four days since I posted the articles. So there is still a little bit of time before we get some decent results, but I want to show you a little trick. So I'm going to do site and I'm going to click tools anytime and then past week. What this does is it shows us any pages on the website that have recently been indexed. And you can see there are 26, okay? So I posted 50 blog posts a day for two days, and then I just wanted to see if they were getting indexed. However, interestingly, they're not just getting indexed, they're actually ranking pretty well. Now, I want you to remember that this is an Irish website, it's a .ie domain, and the idea is to rank in Ireland for people looking to start businesses. And then the idea was to funnel them into craft agency, I guess, or something. But I mean, we're not really focusing on that. That's not really a goal anymore. We're just doing an experiment. So in Ireland, funding for green startups, and remember this is 50 blog posts a day. It's already got the featured snippet, okay? Which is absolutely crazy. Now, one thing I wanna say is interestingly, I didn't allow things, well, they, they weren't getting indexed on their own, basically. So I think there might be an argument to not have a sitemap if you're posting loads and loads of content. Because I think one of the problems is, is when things are automatically sent to Google through the sitemap or whatever it might be, they crawl it. And if there's a hundred blog posts at one time, then I think that's what kind of causes the problem. So instead, if I just pick this one here, so cryptocurrency investments for our startups, a, a weird article, but I'll go through how I found the keywords and everything as well. It's quite interesting how I did it. But you can see the, the articles are not indexed and the URL is unknown to Google. What this means is Google doesn't even know this page exists. So what does that mean for us? It means that we can manually submit it to Search Console. And for Google, it's not too much content because it hasn't picked it up automatically. So what I'm doing is, you can see all these blog posts here, by the way, there's absolutely loads of them. There's 10 per page, and we're currently on the sixth or seventh page. And I think we're around here. So I've already indexed some of these here. Let's just take this one here. Uh, no, I think the last one is this one here, was the last one that just got indexed. So we'll copy this link address. And we'll put it into the search into the search console bar at the top. And you can see it is on Google. So this was manually submitted by me. You can submit 15 blog posts a day. So I guess the limit is 15, but I still posted 50 a day just to see if they were getting getting indexed. So I'm gonna go on most recent date, and you can see 254 impressions, and it was last updated nine hours ago. There's still maybe three or four hours worth of impressions to pick up. And that will be pretty much an all-time high. So 290 is an all-time high. So we're pretty much there, which is really, really interesting. There are some really interesting keywords here as well. Innovative, innovative waste management solutions. Really specific keyword. Let's do bits, biz guru. There we are. So I think we're on the first page for innovative, innovative waste management solutions. Now let's see how I actually found these keywords because I think it's interesting and it plays well into my auto blogger. So I actually used my custom GPT topical authority generator. 
And I can't use the website because it's not indexed on Bing. So what I did instead was I went to the sitemap and I chose all of the current blog posts. And I just said, here, here are my current blog posts, please. And then I just pasted them in. You don't even have to use sitemap to clipboard for this because obviously it's intelligent enough to know what is sitemap data and what is actually a URL. And then all it does is it just reads these URLs. It can instantly see that it's a website about, you know, startups, starting a business in Ireland, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to give me 20 keywords or 20 pillar pages. And what I should have done, I didn't do this because I just wanted to auto blog. I just wanted to test how many pages I could get away with paste, uh, posting. What I should have done is, first of all, I should have created these pages right here. And I, I want to talk about the auto blogger in a bit more detail because I want to show just how bloody good it is. So if we go back to innovative waste management solutions for Ireland. Sorry, let's go for the other one. Let's go for funding for green startups. Okay. So if you just said to ChatGPT, give me some information about uh, funding for green startups in Ireland or write me an article, it will not give you specifics. However, because this now contains a perplexity call, first of all, you can see that, for example, it talks about CEAI capital grants, which I know because we work with a renewable en energy company. This is a real grant offered in Ireland. So that's kind of the most important and the best thing about the autoblogger is that it actually contains real information gained from perplexity. So once this has done the pages, I'm going to say now give me the sub pillar pages. Okay, so what I like to do is I'm just going to stop this and I'm going to say, can you just give me the titles and make sure they contain a reference to Ireland. So obviously, because we're specifically focused on Ireland, I want to focus, I want to make sure that the ideas and the perplexity search and the blog post title and everything contains the word Ireland. Now, once we have this, we can start to look at the autoblogger. Now, again, I'm sorry that the autoblogger is a little bit of a mess, but now we want to be using the complete. Okay. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to go to Visual Studio Code. So I'm just going to write, I'm just going to do git, git clone and then paste the URL and then just put a random file name. I've gone with subboss this time. So then we're going to open folder. We're going to look for subboss. It's normally at the top here, or you can just press the letter that it's associated with. And we're just going to delete everything because I don't want any of this crap. Uh, yes, whatever. Delete. 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 So we just want complete. Inside complete, there is a config.json file, which includes WordPress URL, user ID, user app password. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on how to do this. You just need to go on a user on WordPress and just add a new app um, ID. And then this is the user ID. So for example, if the WordPress user is Hamish, this will be Hamish. And then the user app password is what it will generate. The rest of these are pretty, pretty clear. Open API token, free image host API key, perplexity API key. Business name is really, really important. Page type is very, very important. But these here, they're very, very flexible. Business type as well and language and country. There's no um, A, B, C, or D. Okay, You can put anything here. So if you wanted to create a portfolio page, you could create a portfolio page. It can do absolutely anything. And then all you need to do is inside brand images and links dot text, you need to put your internal links and images that you want to use. And then inside example dot text, you need to put an example of a page that you're trying to get something similar to. And then inside keywords dot CSV, you just need to put the keywords from chat GPT that we got before. So we've got 20 here. So we'll just do 20. Oops. You don't want to get rid of the, the first column, so we've got to drag down like that. I will quickly mention I'm having trouble with getting it to do more than 49 pages at one generation. So for now, at least, um, the maximum is 49. So make sure you don't have more than 49 keywords. 
I will try and change that as soon as possible. But for now, it's it, it is what it is. I'm not a coder. These things are complicated to me. So just give me some time, okay? And then all we do is we right click on brand images and links, copy relative path, and put this here. You can get rid of complete because it's not needed. Path to example file, right click on example.txt, put that here. Put all your API keys as well, obviously. And then keywords.csv, copy relative path, put that here. And then language, country, that's pretty self explanatory. Tone, again, you can put whatever the hell you want. You could put wacky here if you wanted. And then sitemap is if you're doing e commerce and you want an easy way to get your products. So, we're now pretty much ready to run the script. And the correct script is this one here, complete.py. And the main thing that I changed was actually keywords.csv because I was getting really, really annoyed with content plan. It was just way too complicated. So I, I just changed it to a one column CSV. And yeah, let's just run the script. So terminal, new terminal. And I'm actually gonna post the content that I'm showing in this video as well. So I'm gonna do python complete.py. Okay, no mind. I'm gonna do cd complete, first of all, and then I'm gonna do python complete.py. I have the wrong version of OpenAI installed, so pip install OpenAI upgrade. Unfortunately for now, at least format.py uses the older version of OpenAI, whereas um, complete.py uses 1.00. So we do have to switch between, I don't have a better workaround yet. Again, I'm not a coder, so I apologize for that, but. I am trying my best. Now, this normally takes about one minute per article. And another thing I'm going to show at the very end of the video is the cost of this process. But first of all, it's going to upload all of the files and it's going to start work. So I'm just going to leave it for a bit. So like I said before, one of the first thing it does is it creates a featured image. Now, I've tried to get it so it doesn't try and do text. I think I've done a pretty good job, but as you can see, it does sometimes mess up, which is kind of annoying, but yeah, I mean, a lot of these are really bad, actually. <laughs> Normally, it doesn't have this many, this much text. I'm not really sure why it's doing that, but some of them are really, really nice. That is absolutely beautiful, honestly. This is really good as well. Beautiful Irish flag in the middle gets people to click because it's island specific. It's okay. There's a few too many, a uh, few too much text on here. I'm, I'm worrying that I'm not using the right script now. Uh, it's definitely the right script. Uh, I think we just got unlucky, or maybe sometimes it's the keywords are kind of they, they kind of force it to do text. Like if you do SEO, it's obviously going to try and write SEO. By the way, another tip is a lot of people when they're just starting a website, they'll do a lot of uh, search operators on their website like this, so site is guru.ie. Each time you do that, it will give an impression to multiple pages on your website, which is obviously not what you want. So what you can do to check the validity of impressions, and I wanna show you this just to show that these aren't bullcrap impressions, is you can click on the page, click on queries, and as long as there are actual real queries here, then you know that it's a real um, impression. It's a real, yeah, it's a real impression. Another thing you want to check is countries because for some reason this page is ranking in South Korea for cloud solutions, which is not ideal. However, we are potentially ranking for cloud solutions, which is pretty crazy to just be ranking for what must be a pretty big keyword. And this doesn't look too far down as well. This is probably like, yeah, I was going to say 70. So 67th for cloud solutions in Ireland without the keyword in Ireland. <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy for such a new article. Now, people are going to say that this is, you know, an age domain and crap like that, but I'm not even sure it's got 16, 16 months of history. It's just got 16 months. Okay. So, it, I mean, it is, it's an older domain. Yeah. Compared to if you just buy one, but if you if you're not if you can't wait a year then you're not patient enough to to have a website basically it takes about a year to really start to pop off also correction it wouldn't have been an all time high because the all time high is 312 i will hopefully be beating that within a few days and like i said this website was just 
you know, a kind of crappy, not crappy, but it looks nice, but it is, I mean, the, the content was pretty crappy. So if I go to the content, it was all just ChatGPT 3.5 written um, by VAs. It was an experiment that Rowan was running, I guess, to val validate my methods, I guess. I don't, I guess that's why he was doing it. Maybe just trying it out and seeing what happened, I guess. Sorry that I have to scroll through so many pages. I have just released 100 articles. So this is the first one. It was written on the 10th, uh, 20, 10th of April, 2023. It's pretty wall of texty, to be honest with you. There's, there's just a big old wall of text and the information isn't that good. It's pretty general. So what I've done instead is I've just written much, much shorter articles. And you can see the, the run here was actually a lot better. Like hardly any of these uh, Dali images have um, text on them, which is exactly what I wanted. I love images like this. I think this is absolutely beautiful. So another thing that the auto blogger does, and we will see this in a minute, is it creates these data visualizations. This is a really important part of this process, okay? Perplexity and code interpreter to create these are both very important. I recommend that you use them. In fact, the script won't work if you don't use them. I don't know how to make it optional. So one thing I do want to mention, actually, because I, I just realized this, that I hadn't even mentioned it, is that I do have rank math instant and indexing turned on. So if I, look, if I click on history, you can see these have been sent to Search Console, but they weren't getting crawled. And I think it's actually a good thing that they didn't get crawled, because if they did, I think it would have kind of been flagged as spam. So I think the workaround for posting a lot of content is to not let Google crawl it automatically, but to submit them manually through Search Console. Now, obviously that does take a lot of time and it is kind of annoying, but a VA could very, very easily do that for you. So we're currently 10 minutes into the auto blogger and it's done 18 blog posts. I'm very, very happy with the speed of this thing. Now, I will be trying to increase the output so that it's a little bit longer, and I'll probably make that optional because I personally don't want longer content. But a lot of people are asking if they can do, you know, 1,000 word content, 1,500 word content. And I do accept that that is probably a useful thing for some people. So I will be including that at some point as well. Okay, so the script has finished and it took 22 minutes to do 20 articles. I had to rerun the script because I was accidentally using ChatGPT 3.5. Sorry if you heard that noise. If you're curious, by the way, this script, it does work with ChatGPT 3.5, but the internal links and things are all made up sometimes. So it's not, it's just not consistent enough. So we'll do 20, well, just times three. I don't know why I'm doing that on I calculate. It's about 60 blog posts an hour or pages per hour. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do Python format dot pi, and it's going to tell us that it can't do that. And it's going to give us an error. And the reason is, is that it's using a different version of open AI. So I'm going to do pip install open AI equals equals 0 0.28. This changes the open AI version that is installed locally on your computer. So now if you do python format.py, it will start to format the articles. Um, and what that does, I can show you here. You can see it says formatted with titles. Yeah, so in this example, you can see here that it just turns it into an article. What it does is it takes the first h1, or sorry, the first h2, um, which I've specifically made it not an h1 because obviously if it's an h1 there will be two h1s on the page which might lead to not getting indexed so instead what i've done is i put every, the, the first one is an h2 and it takes the h2 and it puts it in title for uh, the wordpress upload and then it has formatted article which is just this html right here it no longer outputs in markdown it actually outputs uh, the final output is in um, html and then the image path is just the featured image from before and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's how it works. So it should format this pretty quickly. Um, it's taken one minute to do six, so it should only take three minutes. If you're wondering, by the way, all of the inputs are already in the script, so you don't need to change anything in the script or anything like that anymore. You just need to change the config file. 
So after this has finished, it's going to create a file called process, processed keywords, no, sorry, formatted keywords with images. And then the final script, upload.py, uses formatted articles with images as an input for the final upload to WordPress, basically. So you don't need to change anything. It's all already there. Okay, so we now have formatted articles with titles.csv. So if we click here, you can see it should be fairly well organized and you should see a lot of HTML, etc., etc. Okay. So without doing anything else, we're now going to do Python upload.py. Now there may be one thing that we have to change. I don't know how this works exactly. Okay. Because I obviously chat GPT coded this. I don't know if it sets the first blog post to be one hour from now, according to the computer, or whether it actually accepts schedule e uh, underscore time equals date time, and then this is the date. So we're going to test this live. So I'm going to do python upload.py, and if it puts the first blog post from tomorrow, because I've just changed this to 17, which is tomorrow, then we'll know that it's taking this input. If it's not taking this input, you don't have to change anything because it'll just start scheduling uh, one hour apart from each other, starting from now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to posts here. So we'll just click on all posts. And then once this says the first one has been scheduled successfully. Okay, so it does take this as an input. So you can change this. This is the, um, I'll, I'll put a comment here. So this is uh, year month, day, hour, minute. So you can change this and then it will just start scheduling them one hour apart from each other. So you can see 9.44, 10.44, starting tomorrow on the 17th. Okay, this is the only thing you have to change. Um, and I may put this as a, uh, as a config input very, very soon. Now let's refresh this and we should start to see that we have scheduled posts. Um, so let's just Take a random one. I don't know. No, let's just take this one. So we'll preview this and we'll have a look at the output here. Oh, I forgot to remove the HTML. Sorry, just uh, classic. On the formatted articles with title, what you want to do is you want to do control F and look for dash dash. Uh, how do you write it? You want to look for this. So yeah, three of these. So for some reason, I, I can't get rid of this. I've tried. So you, you search for this and then you press replace and then you just search for just those three and then press replace. Okay, so they're now gone. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to just quickly go back just in case you made the same mistake as me, which you will have done because you're following my tutorial here. So I'm just going to trash all of the scheduled ones real quick. So scheduled, scheduled. Scheduled, 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 and then we'll move to trash and apply. And then we're just going to run the script again. And this time that uh, weird HTML formatting won't be there anymore. So we'll run upload.py. No, we won't. We'll cd into uh, complete. And then we'll python upload.py. Okay, so we'll preview this customer feedback collection methods in Ireland. We can see that there are some images that doesn't doesn't seem to be any internal links obviously not every article is going to be perfect because we are just using an auto blogger but generally speaking it has been very very consistent so we will give it another go instead of just taking the first one so we'll preview this one swot analysis unlocking the potential for startups in ireland key takeaway table we have the custom graph which by the way is an actual upload it's not uh, on the free image.host servers. It's actually on your WordPress server. The way that I did that is I just installed a plugin. I believe it's this one here, auto upload images. What it does is when you save a blog post, including through the API, any images that aren't internally stored on your CDN or whatever your WordPress server, will be uploaded automatically to your WordPress server. So make sure you have auto upload images installed as well. And then we'll scroll down, explore our services page, you know, blah, 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 another custom image, some images from the homepage, call to action, 
And then, yeah, just pretty nice in detail article that, to be honest, unless you know ChatGPT and you know that this is Code Interpreter and you know that this is DALI, it's going to be quite hard to spot that this is AI generated, in my opinion. Now, the final thing we want to look at is, of course, the cost of this. So we'll refresh this. And yes, I do spend an absolute metric ton on ChatGPT. So just so you know. So the total cost of this was uh, 3.320 add 123 is 443. It's basically bang on $20. Okay, so that's $1 an article for some fairly high quality ranking content. Now, one more thing I want to check is whether this comes out as AI generated in the tools, which I don't use these tools, but. Okay, so gpt0.me says 12% probability AI generated, and then we're going to check or originality as well. Again, I don't like these tools. I don't believe in these tools, but I think if you can pass them, then people do like that. So I don't think it's going to pass original originality.ai. I'd be very curious to see if it does actually. But I mean, GPT-0 says 12%. So, I mean, I'm hoping that it's going to be the same for this. Okay, so obviously originality AI has a different um, different idea and it says 100% AI. Again, I don't care about this because it ranks on Google anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend. And I will see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.